Okay. Welcome, everybody. Had a little bit of glitch here on that web. They still have a glitch. Well, pshaw. What's happening here? All right, maybe that's working. Okay, let me make sure. All right, that seems to be working. All right, good evening, everybody. All right, there were some red flags today. Even though the Dow was up strong and the S&P was up relatively strong, you know, that's a different chart than over here. Let me see if I am looking at everything the same way. That's strange. Over on this chart, it's showing a red candle that opened higher and traded off. Over on TC Net. Aha. That might be. Let me take a. That's today's chart. That's the 13th. All right, we're going to have to just go without the S&P chart. The NASDAQ chart did not look pretty today. Notice how they gapped it open and then they traded lower, even though they closed it right here on the T-line. We've had a Gap up hanging man. Then we had a, uh, yeah, I saw that on on that chart. I don't know why it's not updating the S&P chart. Something's wrong there. But to, uh, the NASDAQ today did a belt hold bearish engulfing left right combo. Even though it closed right here on the uh, T-line, it showed a lot of weakness today. And there was quite a few stocks that uh, that also uh, did not look good. So there might be a little bit of inclination now for some profit taking to come into this market. We'll have to see whether they bring have another day of consolidation that brings things back down to the uh, – down to the T line. And gold. Gold looks like it's trying to find a base. Let me. Still in a downtrend, still below the three T line. So uh, silver. Also doing the same thing. Still in a downtrend, but might be basing in here. And what else we got? Interest rates. Notice what happened with the interest rates. They bounced up to the 50. Usually uh, 10 year uh, bonds. And then traded off from there. So we're still in this slow downtrend. Um, But we can't get up above, uh, or in this slow downtrend and showing us that we can't get up above the, uh, now is this December 13th? Now what's happening here? Okay. Let's take a gander here at, whoops. Uh, 
Okay, but that's that's that chart is updated, so I don't know what's happening. That's Apple, which is you still want to stay short. Uh, crude oil. That's as of October 13th. So, ah, all right. Well, so much for. Uh, And that's October 13th. All right. Well, for sure. Then we'll just go straight to the uh, charts. All right. This one, uh, FENG, still doing a nice pattern. Every time it hits the key line, they start taking it back up. This one can still be bought because it's probably got to the top of the trend channel as its next target. Um, VIPS also was holding up pretty well today. It kind of backed off near the close of the day, but it's staying in this nice steady uptrend. Now, there were a few that were kind of giving you the inclination that maybe uh, they've hit a top up here. We had a bearish Harami on HMIX a couple of days ago. Then we had the Doji hammer that looked positive. But then once more, we've got a bearish engulfing signal or left-right combo. Uh, so things are getting a little bit toppy here. So if the NASDAQ is telling us that we might have some profit taking going on, it was a sign that any of the ones that started looking a little bit iffy might close them out. You can always buy them back if this market turns around. But it, it looks like with us being in the overbought condition, we're uh, we're probably getting to the point where you probably want to take some off off the table. I could reboot, but that's going to take a few minutes. And I don't know if any. I think everything else is updated except a few of those commodities. That's right. Be able to. Okay, and then. Uh, Dang is another one where it's doing kind of this little stutter step. Let's make this a little bit bigger. We still have the strong strong reversal signal, which is the uh, the doji gap up, big bullish day, indecisive pullback, hasn't been able to close below the T line. If this opens positive tomorrow, you definitely want to be a buyer because that's telling you that uh, that this is just consolidation before the next move uh, to the upside. And I think things like KTOS, ah. KTOS should have been closed out today. You had a hanging man and then a bearish engulfing signal closing below the T line. That's pretty much telling us that they started selling yesterday. And they still sold again today, so you want to be out of that one. Um, and what else we got here? The LWD. Buffalo wings. This is what we're going to be looking at today is the perfect setups, like a fry pan bottom that has a doji at the end of it today. If they open up positive tomorrow, that gives us a bunch of messages. First of all, it tells us that if we drew our trend line right through the tops and they open this positive, they're going to take it higher. If they take it higher, they're breaking out through this level. They're also moving away from this level. And if they move up the same magnitude as this day right here, that means you're going to have a fairly good uh, breakout of a uh, fry pan bottom. And uh, so fry pan bottoms, there's what? 
there's a bunch of things that we can expect coming out of a fry pan bottom. One of them is what we call the classic. The classic is a fry pan bottom, strong price move, then J hook pattern. We were buying D at Y A X today, and it can still be bought tomorrow. Notice what this J hook pattern did for us. It gapped up through the resistance, off the T line, doing a J hook. This one should have this type of magnitude of move at least to the upside. This is what we hope coming out of a fry pan bottom. Notice how what this did over here. Doji sandwich, doji sandwich, broke through this level, and then bang, had a good 25% move off of uh, that trade today. Not that it's going to happen every single time, but seeing something build up like this, the prospects, yes, that was a buyout. So it doesn't matter why it got up there. It was telling us it was going, had a high probability of going up there. Um, so basically, anytime you see these fry pan bottom setups, you're going to have a good probability of, uh, let's see, the, your charts are not showing the dates at the bottom. Oh, okay, let's see what I can do here. Get rid of this little one, and I could probably just. There we go. But coming out of these fry pan bottoms, we should expect a good strong price move. Where's a good price, strong price move uh, for this one? More than likely, now that you've gapped up into the uh, gap area. Next target should be up here, or pretty much uh, corresponding with uh, this trading area. An AVG, another one. Just as it got to the top of this fry pan bottom, notice how this one started. Well, the indecisive trading, big cradle type pattern. Then he stopped with a hammer, bullish confirmation. That was the uh, juice to get this one, uh, get this one moving. So the reason we should like, or you should like, or the reason I like the fry pan bottom is because the expectation of a strong result are very good, despite what the overall market might be doing at any given time. So this one was, uh, when it got to the breakout level, nice gap up. I would suspect there's going to be more upside to this one. Boeing, same scenario. Fry pan bottom. And notice where the breakout is. Right about the same level as where the uh, they topped out before. And bam, this was building up to something. And that something is usually a big... Uh, uh, big price move. HBI is one to get get set up, get ready for. Why? Because here we have that rounding bottom. Here we've got that kind of little morning star signal, a close above the T line, a gap up, a breakout through this level. The gap up off of here tells us we probably have some more upside to that one. That was HBI, HBI, HBI. Is that what it is? And HCA. Just now breaking out. Let's make this smaller so we can see what the whole chart looks like. Downtrending channel, fry pan bottom. Doji sandwich, gap up through this resistance level, 
that just tells you there's probably another leg up uh, that things are building up for a continued uptrend. And uh, whoops, S star C S C fry pan bottom. This one should have. Notice you have your best friend right here, Doji Gap up. Should be telling us there's going to be more upside. All right. Now, remember, this is your kind of your best friend, Doji Gap up, coming out of a fry pan bottom. We know what the result should be uh, coming out of a fry pan bottom be a strong move. What tells us we're probably going to be in a strong move? A doji gap up. Anytime we see your best friend, like we saw down here, doji gap up through this resistance level, had a strong price move, and now what's happening in wave three? Doji gap up. That tells us if this is wave one, wave three should be a strong uh, move also. And POWR, kind of a little hammer, doji, gap up through this downtrending resistance. This one, if it pops back up uh, to test the highs, you've got a five-point move on a 14 or $15 stock, you've got a 30, 35% uh, upside potential. So basically what we're trying to do is identify which ones have the uh, – the best upside potential still, and that's, again, with a doji breakout gap up, tells you there's going to be more upside. Uh, and when you uh, see that, uh, there's that doji gap up. What do we wait for? Remember, anytime we see something like this, the message was already clear. They gap this up. Somebody was getting in here very quick. Somebody was taking profits. And once the profit taking is over, they're going to take it right back up again. So all we have to do is look for the next buy signal, which in this case was a hammer followed by a bullish engulfing signal, J-hook pattern. Now at the top of the J-hook, they have a little doji gap up. That pretty much tells us we're going to have some more upside. IBN, not IBM. There's that little uh, uh, J-hook pattern, our, kind of our classic. They come up to the resistance level. They back off to the T-line. Now that you had that bullish Harami doji, remember, anytime you see a doji in a multi-day pattern, it usually means that it's going to be a lot stronger reversal. In this case, a gap up from a doji Harami right here on the uh, 50. That tells us if this opens positive, we want to be a buyer. They're taking it up. And where's our next resistance level? There's a gap right up here to fill. That makes the 200 a very good good prospect as far as the target. Oh, Pashaw. And BMRN. Break out of wave two, strong price move. Look where they pulled it back to, smack dab to the T-line. Now you have a doji, hammer. Oh, shoot. Hang on for one second.
Sorry about that. Yeah, ADRs are different. Uh, when they gap up, it's because they've been trading in different uh, markets. Um, so ADRs, have a, you have a hard time using the signals with them. You just have to see what type of patterns they're setting up. So this one's got a good J-hook pattern set up with that doji, hammer, gap up. Uh, we should have another wave to this one. And SPWR, another little doji gap up. If this opens positive, you want to be buying because if it breaks out through this level, you probably got some good strong running room. And uh, wage, J-hook pattern. Notice how this J-hook pattern is starting off. A little kicker type signal. That tells you that they're getting back into this with great enthusiasm. This one you probably want to be buying on positive trading tomorrow. And PDS, there's your doji gap up, J-hook pattern. If it opens positive and goes positive, what's it telling us? It's breaking out through this level, and it's breaking out through this level. It tells us we're probably in a very strong uptrend. And notice how this bounced bounced right off the uh, 50 and started back up. Now we're in the J-hook pattern. The J-hook pattern is starting with a doji gap up. Let's see. And TPLCM, TPLM. Well, for Shaw. Uh, TPLM, another J-hook pattern. If this opens positive tomorrow, there's your classic. Fry pan bottom, strong price move, J-hook pattern. This one you definitely want to be uh, buying on a positive open tomorrow. And L, F, L, L, F, L. LFL, there's your classic fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern. Another one that you can be buying on positive trading because it's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. If they open up positive, you've got kind of your little flutter kicker, uh, which makes this a very, very strong uh, uh, pattern. Tells us we could probably move up fairly quickly into the $17, $18 area. All right, a couple other ones that look good. PPC looks like if it comes up through, it's got a bullish engulfing signal gap up. If it comes up through the 50 tomorrow, it's got some running room. And remember our AFSI that we recommended uh, today because of the potential Doji sandwich after breaking out through this downtrending channel. You want to keep an eye on FBC tomorrow. Because we've got the morning star signal that closed above the T line. Doji, Doji sandwich should take us up into this area someplace. So, all right. I guess that's about, oh, let's see. Let's see. Why is this? working. This is uh, huh. this is hogs today, but it's still saying October 13th, so it looks like it's just in the commodity area that they've got the date goofed up. But uh, notice what the hogs are doing. They pulled back right here to this level, did a doji gap up. Uh, problem with the uh, charts on the commodities is they close it right here. This is their official closing. That's at 2 o'clock uh, when they close hogs. 
but it trades until uh, 5 o'clock, and it was trading back down here. So to see what the real chart looks like, you have to flip over to your 10-minute chart to see what's actually happening. And you can see there's still this big fry pan bottom setting up. The Russell 2000, that's the 10 minute. That's also just like what we saw in the uh, NASDAQ, where they opened it higher and brought it back down. Didn't close below the T line. So it makes it very simple. If they start trading this down tomorrow, or we wake up and the pre market futures are down, kind of expect the NASDAQ and the, uh, the Russell to come back and. Uh, test the, uh, uh, the 3T with the possibility they could be coming back down to test the uh, 50 also. And uh, let's see, DXAZ3. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that, but uh, yeah, this is today's trading. This is the dollar still heading down. So, all right. Anyways, even though the Dow is up strong, it is moving away from the T-line. Still up above the, uh, the 3T, but we've got to... Today's trading, especially with the NASDAQ trading like this, we've got to kind of uh, be a little bit suspicious that there might be some potential profit taking building up in, for this, in this market. All right, so with that, do we have any general questions on candlesticks? Let's see. FOM meeting Wednesday will move the markets to new highs or a whole hard pullback. We won't know that. I mean, right now, there doesn't seem to be any great concern about what's going to go on in the meeting. Um, so, but we'll probably get a better feel on how they close the market tomorrow. And let's see what else we got here. That could be that Apple did pull the market down uh, quite a bit today. But as we started out the day, and as we can see, there was a heck of a lot of uh, oh, uh, green on the screen this morning on the open. So, uh, I haven't heard back from Trade Station yet. I got to get with Pat to see what uh, what they want to do. They've had us scheduled for getting things set up here in September, and shoot, September is already halfway gone. And uh, hold on, I've got some screen problems here. Well, if I'm not going to fix it. So. All right. Let's see, uh, after an open gap up, would you exit if it went below the open price? Not necessarily the open price, but like uh, what happened today in the NASDAQ, 
if they gap it up in the overblock condition and are able to bring it back down through the uh, previous day's close, that means this wasn't going anywhere. That was the exhaustion up at the top. Let's see, we scalped few crude futures, so there are few or no gaps. What's the best signal for scalping futures? Uh, shoot, depends on what your time frame is for uh, scalping the uh, crude oil. What's the 10-minute uh, chart look like? Yeah, so they gap it down from day to day. I usually trade the 10-minute chart on the uh, on the uh, commodities like crude uh, uh, like crude oil and that sort of thing um, especially the uh, oh, uh, oh, especially on soybeans and things like that Now this is a soybeans 10 minute chart. You can see what it's it's doing. So and it looks like it's trying to base here once again. Notice there is a somebody is accumulating it and wants to back down to this level. Is there more strength to the J hook than when the uh, pullback doesn't take the stochastics back to the oversold? Yes, usually the uh, on a J hook pattern. You won't have that uh, the uh, the uh, stochastics get close to the. Uh, that's not what I wanted. You won't have the uh, stochastics getting back to the uh, oversold. It usually will be somewhere in the uh, and mostly about no more than halfway down. It will be some back to the halfway point or higher. And then start to curl back up. Let's see, at 828, all right. Uh, TPLM, it seems so far away from the T line and in the overbought area, it seems tomorrow would be too late. T T L M. Uh, but you remember, you're still buying the pattern. It's not that far away from the from the T line. It's like a lot closer here than it was over here, or over here, and you're in a pattern. So remember, even when they start taking this up, the the uh, T line and the three T will start coming right up with it. Remember, you're trading the pattern. You're not trading the uh, the secondary indicators, the confirming indicators. It's good to watch them, but I'd rather be trading the pattern because that's that's where I'm going to make my money, and then hope the uh, uh, the indicators get into where they're confirming also. Uh, I don't think the uh, that is the uh, I'm pretty sure this is today's chart on soybeans. I think, maybe not. Oh, wait. Oh, look at PTL M. Well, what's happening here? S dot C P L M. Oh, okay, but still look at where it is on the uh with the three T. The three T has been holding it up. And so if it trades higher tomorrow, the T line will still be catching up and it will still be above the three T. Let's see, PDS, 
would you please discuss the topping hammer candle? Why is this not bearish on PDS? Not a hammer say no let's say where to, would you please discuss the topping hammer segment? Why is this not bearish? Uh, this is still a gap up from a doji, and your stochastics are not in the overbought condition, plus you've got a pattern set up, so the number one criteria is your signal and then your pattern. So this is not a, yeah, I remember a hammer signal is at the bottom. These are, that's more of a hammer signal. Um, this isn't a shooting star because we're not in the overbought condition yet. Okay, with that, uh, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 4.8 seconds, do the second double line. Jim, the second, there we go, all right. Okay, now I'm going to find the first double line. There we go. All right. Potash. Potash has that little slow curve, came up, hit the uh, 50, pulled right back to the T-line, morning star signal, kind of a doji type day, makes it very simple. If they open this positive, you want to be buying off the J-hook pattern that's telling us the 50 is not acting as resistance with your next target up here to fill the gap. INSM, did a bearish engulfing signal today. Still in an uptrend, but if it opens lower tomorrow, it means they're coming back to test the T-line. That's not bad, but for safety's sake, if they, this market is selling off tomorrow, you probably want to close it out because we don't know if it's going to stop here at the T-line or down here at the 20. Worst case scenario, as it comes, bounces off the T-line and comes back up, you can always buy back in. Remember, it only takes about seven seconds to... Type in an order and uh, hit the uh, buy button. ADSK, nice little doji gap up. This one you can still be buying. HSOL, another morning star signal, right smack dab off the 50. There's your doji right here on the. 50, this one you can be buying on positive trading tomorrow. Just use the T-line as your stop. And KEG, not a very strong signal, but still gives you the implication. You definitely want to see this get up through the 50 or through the T-line before buying. Kind of a hammer type signal, but not quite. Um, so you've got the possibility of a... Uh, trade is just not as clean a trade as some of the other charts right now. Krispy Kreme. This one you can be buying on positive trading. If it trades back below the T-line tomorrow, you want to be out of it. And uh, Racks. Racks. Uh, you're going to use to today's low as your stop. If it comes back down through there, that means they're bringing it back to the T-line and possibly doing a J-hook. But notice how you came out of your fry pan bottom, you hit your first target. This is why I always say, when people say, well, what's your target? I say, watch the 200-day moving average, meaning when it gets up here to the 200-day moving average, see what type of signals it's doing. If it's doing dojis and they can't get through, that means there's a lot of indecision up here. Get ready to take profits on any signs of weakness. That means they failed the 200. But also be ready for our classic type of situation where they pull back to the T-line 
and then come back up uh, uh, and do a J-hook type pattern that comes back up through. Hog, that's the wrong hog. Harley, all you can do here is stay long until you see a sell signal and a close below the key line. And G N E, whoops, S that G M E. GameStop. Uh, this one. Better see it open positive. If it opens negative, they're coming back down to the T-line, and you're right back into the trading sideways. Uh, if it does that, you probably want to be out of it, moving to someplace else where your upside uh, prospect is a little bit better. Let's say Panera. S dot P N R A. Uh, Panera, not anything to get real excited about. Even if it comes up into this area, you're only getting a few points. Right now, it's just a stock that I wouldn't be long or short. And OHI. Notice it came all the way up to the 50, failed, came back down almost to the close. If this opens lower tomorrow, they're taking it right back down to the T line, then you have to wait for your next buy signal. And MTH doing a doji sandwich setup. If this opens positive tomorrow, you can be buying. If they break through this level, you've got some running room. IMMR. Another doji right here on this fry pan bottom bottom. Uh, be ready to buy in positive trading. If you own it and it opens lower tomorrow, you want to close it out. That means it's not going anywhere just yet, which isn't funny. Oh, they're looking for Hawaiian holdings. All right. Morning star signal off the T line. If it opens positive, your fry pan bottom's in in progress. HSOL. Uh, again, you could be buying this on positive trading. Bouncing up off the T line. Let's see. Hero. Hero, uh, same scenario, J-hook pattern in progress. If you want to be a buyer, just don't let it close back below the T-line. A run got a little bit soggy. This one should have been closed out with it coming back down and closing below the T-line. tells us that even if they take this up, they aren't going to take it up with any great strength. At best, it might be in this trajectory. It needed to open positive yesterday and trade positive. BONT, rounding bottom, has come up above the T-line. It needs to open positive and trade positive. But if, if it comes back down through the T-line, tells you the uh, seller or the buyers aren't there anymore, you need to move on to something else. And XLNX, bouncing smack dab off the uh, 50 on a little scoop type pattern. Just stay long until you see a sell signal. And CHL, another uh, J hook type pattern. This one you can be buying on positive trading. And CUR, all you can do here is stay long until you see a sell signal. At this point, I probably wouldn't want to see it close back below the, the 3T, because if it does that, it means they're going to take it back down to the T-line. And REE, -E, all you can do here is stay long until you see a sell signal. When they start gapping these up, that means there's probably more upside. L-I-T-B, 
get ready for uh, here's your uh, uh, little J hook pattern. Get ready for a positive open. If it opens positive, though, take it right up to the 200 or up to the 50. MTDR. Uh, this one did a bearish engulfing. It has to open positive and trade positive tomorrow to stay in it. If it opens lower, close out the position immediately. VTUS hold back a little bit today. Need to see what it does tomorrow. If it opens lower, they're going to take it back to the T line. Maybe. I mean, so if it opens lower, you probably want to close it out. You can always buy it back if it bounces up off the uh, T line. If not, if they take it right back down into this area, that means you're you're pretty much fizzled. And we did E or B O N T. E W G S dot E W G. Same thing. All you can do here is stay long and see if see a sell signal to close back below the key line. U N G J hook pattern. This one you can still be buying on positive trading. Just be conscious of what it does once it gets up here to the uh, the 200. But if it breaks through there, that means you're probably going to have a good uh, uh, trajectory to the upside from there. Facebook, Facebook got weak today, <clears throat> which it, with a closing below the T line, you should have closed out the position. Probabilities of something bad happening with a close below the T line, especially when it's shown that to use the T line for quite a while as support means there's something new in the uh, stock. Oh, Pashal, hang on for one second. Okay, sorry about that. So this one should have been closed out today. And IBM, OS.IBM, stay long until you see a sell signal. Uh, PGH. S dot P G H. This one you stay long as long as it doesn't close below the T line. This one you want to see it open positive and start trading positive, especially break out through this area. Uh, you're getting a 10% yield off of this one also. S H O R. Stay long. Nice uptrending stock. Some of the. Uh, REITs are acting well, or they were acting well. Nally moving up, AGNC. Ah, bearish and golfing. As long as it stays above the T line, you're going to be all right. They, they were acting well the last couple of days. COWN, that's a nice uh, J hook pattern. This one you can be buying on positive trading. Just make sure the volume is good on this one. And DHF, another one that can be bought, especially if it breaks out through this resistance level. Just stay long into as long as it doesn't close below the T line. Uh, ZIOP, you don't want to be long or short. We can't short this below three dollars. Right now, you want to be out of this one. It's just not going anywhere. Notice how the the, uh, the 200 day moving average is now looking like it's asking as a resistance level. IRM, whoops, that's not it. IRM, this one, fry pan bottom. You can be buying on a positive open tomorrow. Just be more conscious of what it does once it gets up here to the to the uh, 
50-day moving average. AMGN, nice slow curve breakout. Stay long on this one. And AWRE, this one all you can do is stay long until you see a sell signal. Sienna, Sienna's still got that slow curve set up. Stay long. Right now you can see that the 3T is acting as a uh, support. So if it closes back below the 3T, more than likely it's going to come back and test the T line. So if you're trading quick, if it closes below the 3T, close it out and then see what it does once it gets back to the T line. What is that? IDDD? Or you're looking for DDD? Whoops. DDD just is not able to pick up any steam, and it can't get it back up above the T line. You should be out of this one. NQ gave up ground today. Whoops. S dot NQ. It closed right here on the 3T. So the only way to stay in this one tomorrow is it has to open positive and trade positive to stay in it, which has a good probability of doing because he did have a fry pan bottom uh, breakout. EXPE, stay long now that you're here at the 50. It needs to break through the 50 pretty quick. If it starts lollygagging here, it means it's going to kind of have a key line crunch before they can push it through. And EFX, another doji sandwich setup. Be ready to buy this one on a positive open tomorrow. It will get you right up to the 50. And TDC. Also uh, stay long as long as it stays above the T line. AKS. Uh, this one's getting soggy. If this opens lower tomorrow, they're bringing it back down to the T line. I would close it out and wait to see what it does once it gets to the T line. Ford. Stay long as long as it stays up above the T line. And Chesapeake. Chesapeake is right there on the cusp. It needs to open higher and trade higher to stay in it. We did Mont COL or SOL. SOL having a hard time getting back up above the T line. You probably don't want to buy this one at all until it does get back up above the T line. Right now, as we can see, there's not any buyers there. Uh, IBBI, all you can do on this one is stay long until you see a sell signal. And CMG. Fry pan bottom, stay with it as long as it stays above the T line. As you can see, they're still staying above the three T. And FIO, FIO is coming back probably not only to test the T line, but also the 50. Remember, when they go through a major support level or resistance level, they'll come back and test it for support. ACAD, stay with this as long as it stays up above the T line, especially the three T line. We would like to see this open higher tomorrow. Re, all you can do is stay long on this one. I would use today's open as my stop. So if it came back down through there, that tells us the uh, sellers are, are taking control. FSLS, this one has to open positive and start trading positive. If it trades flat tomorrow, you're now in this slow, flat, rounding bottom. You probably want to find something else to trade. UNXL had some strength in it early in the day. It did close above the T-line, so if it opens positive tomorrow, you can be buying it. And BRCM, nice little uh, J-hook type pattern. This one you can be buying. Just be conscious of what it does once it gets here. Because if it breaks through here, then you've got some running room up to fill this gap and then fill this gap up here at the 200. 
G A L T. Getting a little bit soggy. Um, this one, uh, more than likely, if they open this lower, they're taking it back down here, the T line. You have to see what it does from there. If you're long, it better open positive and trade positive to stay in it. A W R E, uh, this one we did, you just stay long. H I M X goes right here in the T line with a left right combo. If it opens lower, close it out. It's going to test the T line and hopefully support there, but we won't know that until it gets there. As a TMV, left right combo. Like, you know, this is the uh, 20 year uh, bearish. Uh, if it opens positive, you can be buying. That means the 20 year bonds are still heading down. Where did I find that? BRCM. Yeah, we did that one. Uh, Day hook type pattern. We did AKS. Uh, getting toppy up here. It needs to open positive. And okay. Uh, HSOL, we did that one. Uh, would you, what would your preferred recommendations for now mile be the best friend signals like CSC and KSR? They're on there. Here's the ones that I've got circled. Tazar is one of them. Or the HBI well Shaw. This one uh, fry pan bottom with hat which has a little gap up. PDS J hook pattern with a gap up on a positive open. TPLM. Yeah, that's uh, TPLM. This one on a positive open would be a J-hook pattern moving the same magnitude from here. And Tazar, also J-hook pattern with a doji gap up. Uh, Morgan Stanley, this one's still in that uh Doji uh, gap up. This one, you stay long. This is another indication. Notice kind of the fry pan bottom breaking out through this area. Kind of indication that uh, the market should stay strong. Um, when the uh, brokerage firms stay strong, the usually the market's going to stay strong. MAS needs to definitely open higher and trade higher. If it opens lower, it's coming back down to the uh, uh, the T line. Uh, NDLS, uh, I wouldn't be long or short this one right now. That's just too junky sideways. Uh, we did DDD. Would we short it? No, because I think your stochastics are getting pretty well used up. I would suspect this is all the further that it would move to down to the 50, which isn't worth the... Uh, the risk reward. If I'm going to short something, I want something with a big downside potential. GMCR, also kind of in a pennant formation. I wouldn't be trading this until it broke out one way or the other. NBS uh, needs to open higher and trade higher tomorrow to stay in it. If it opens lower, you want to close it out. Something severely wrong there. Um, Orex. Forex uh, wouldn't be long or short here. You're still stuck in this down trending channel. You do have a potential of a uh, flutter kicker, but you definitely want to see this downside channel uh, uh, broken.
ISIS have a decent looking chart? It did earlier in the day. If you own it, it has to open higher and trade higher to stay in it. TWRD, this is just flat as a pancake now. It needed to break out through this level, which it didn't do. I'd have my money elsewhere. Yeah, Facebook, is, that's the first sell signal, but it is a sell signal. It may only come down here to the 20. You can always buy it back. Or it may gap down here and head right to the 50. We don't know. ARWR, that's another one that kind of fizzled out today with the bearish engulfing signal, bell hold. If this opens lower tomorrow, you definitely want to be out of it. And T Q N T. Another one that uh, kind of fizzled out. Uh, you probably want to be out of this also because it just doesn't have any trend to it. IBM filling the gap. Yeah, uh, just about ready to do that or just may have done it today. And Tesla, Tesla back up above the key line. This is where you want it. If it opens positive tomorrow, you uh, definitely can stay with it with the anticipations going back to the top of the trend channel. CXO, uh, getting a little bit toppy up here. If this opens lower tomorrow, anticipate coming back at least to the key line. Might take off some, just uh, just uh, you can always buy it back if it does a bounce back up off the key line. And Bidu, not doing anything exciting. Had an opportunity to break out, but now it's practically back into the trading range. Especially if they open this lower tomorrow, you want to be out of this trade. ABX. Did a little bounce off the uh, 50. If this opens positive, breaking the T-line, you want to be in it. And then, obviously, you want to break this down trending channel. And con. Kong had the opportunity of setting up a nice J-hook pattern. It fizzled today. So you can give it another couple of days as long as it stays above the T-line. But it needs to start coming up to kind of confirm that, uh, oh, the uh, J-hook. Pandora, wouldn't doubt if you're now not right in this 45 degree coming off of this big price move, which is – not unusual. There's your fry pan bottom. There's your trend trajectory pullback. Now there's your trend trajectory uh, right back in place. G way. S dot. G W A Y. Just stay long as long as it stays above the. Uh, T line, especially the three T line. Grace, uh, stay long here as long as you stay above the T line. It better not do anything severe like uh, come back down and start trading below this level. That would tell you they're coming back down to the T line. Newmont. Ah. Newmont, uh, looks like it's trying to do a double bottom. I wouldn't go after it until it does get back up above the T-line. We did, dang, Netflix. Oops, excuse me. Stay long as long as it doesn't close below the uh, T-line. Uh, okay. Last one will be. MWW, 
bearish engulfing. This one should have been closed out today. Again, there's a signal and a close below the key line. INO, INO, uh, you stay with this one as long as it stays up above the key line. And if it opens positive tomorrow, you can still be a buyer. Uh, Evan, uh, somewhere in the members area, uh, you should be able to find the uh, recorded stock chats. That's a strategy. Okay. All right, let's call it a night because I know you all want to get to the Steelers game on Monday Night Football. So we'll see everybody in the chat room tomorrow. Have a good evening.